And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. And on today's show, I'm going to take a step back today because I've realized over the last couple of weeks, I've hit you with a lot of high-level information, and I have to realize that not all of you have the same educational knowledge that I have about real estate investing. And I'm not picking on you. I'm not pointing you in the chest, poking you in the chest, whatever people do with their finger to your chest, I'm not doing that to you. The point I want to make is that I understand that not everybody understands 100% of what I talk about on the show. So why don't we do this? Why don't you and I get on the same sheet of music? I, I don't want to leave you behind. I want you to understand the concepts that I talk about on the show. And I want you to relate those concepts to what's going on in your own life. Does that make sense? I know it makes sense to you. So one of the concepts that we throw out all the time, I throw it out, Mike Harrison throws it out, Andy Webb throws it out, and our own Del Walmsley, um, we talk about all the time, is that you can get yourself retired in the next five years. Now, some of you don't believe that. Some of you think that that is a pipe dream, that based on what you know, it's impossible to get there. There's no way you can go from your current situation to being retired in the next five years. And I would agree with you. For those of you that believe that, I agree that you believe that. And I need you to change your mindset. I need you to take a step back from what you've been doing and recognize that there are other possible avenues for you to approach and go down that can result in you retiring yourself in the next five years. Now, it's going to take a little effort on your part. It's going to take a little work on your part. It's going to take your ability to learn because the first thing you have to do is you have to educate yourself regarding the possibilities that are out there. Right now, your mind is focused on what everybody's been telling you. Think about it. People like your parents, your teachers, your guidance counselors, your stockbrokers, your financial planners, all these people who mean well have been telling you how to get yourself to a place of retirement. But here's the problem. You're taking retirement advice from people that have not retired themselves yet. I, I've got a young friend. He's about 25 years of age. His name is Tom. I, I love him as a son. And the reason I love him as a son is because he's one of my son's best friends. Now, he went to college. He did all the things that he was supposed to do. He earned a degree. And then he found it difficult to penetrate into the workforce. He found himself taking jobs that, well, he could have gotten those jobs without the college degree. But he took those jobs because... He needed money. He needed to support himself. That's the way our economy works, right? Okay, so over time, he was doing these jobs that were paying him eh wages, but I mean, he was getting by. And then all of a sudden, he stumbled across financial services. Yeah, he, he stumbled across financial services. And he thought, wow, this is interesting. I'm, I'm articulate. I'm intelligent. I can learn all of these concepts and I can help people achieve retirement. And here's the problem with what Tom is doing. Tom is 25 years of age. He is taking all of these courses to teach him all of this information about security and exchange stuff that has to do with actually selling you securities in the form of insurance or financial plans or mutual funds or stocks or, or whatever he winds up selling you. And he's essentially becoming a salesman for a big entity that hasn't retired itself. No, the entity has not retired itself either. It's still perpetuating. It's still perpetuating. It's still making money for its shareholders. And Tom is now a cog in that machine. Now, I don't mean any ill will to Tom. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, Tom, if you're listening, I, I wish you nothing but success. I realize that the majority of the people in this country, they need your services, Tom, because without what you're doing, 
they wouldn't even have a retirement game plan at all. Yeah. So I think, I think what Tom is doing is valuable, but I don't think it's valuable to you. And part of the reason you turned tuned into this radio show is you want to find out about real estate investing. This whole concept of real estate investing, it, it piques your curiosity. It's something that you want more information about. Totally fine. We share all of that information on this radio show. Now, you're not, you're not going to get 100% of it on today's show. You're going to have to listen to multiple shows to get all the information. But we will share all of that information with you. We'll also suggest that you become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited because it's Lifestyles Unlimited that taught me what I know. And it's part of the way I'm able to communicate with you about what I know is because they taught me what I know. So what am I getting at? Well, the first thing I want to get at is I want to ask you a very, very deliberate question. Why did you decide that you want to invest in real estate? Go ahead, answer the question. Shout it at the radio if you want. I don't care. I can't hear you, but it's okay to talk back to me. Yeah. Now, some of you, some of you want to invest in real estate because you want to end a career. You're, you're tired of working for the man. Maybe you've been working 10, 20, 30 years doing the same thing. Maybe you've had enough. Maybe you're not seeing the fruits of all your labor at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. So you're concerned. Maybe you're having a financial crisis in your life. I, I've had one of those. The first time I tried to retire myself, I had a financial crisis. Yeah, I, I tried to live off the pension that didn't pay me enough money to support my household. That's a financial crisis. Now, other people, they have something called a, a midlife meltdown. You've, you've heard of those, right? Midlife meltdowns? Yeah. Okay, what is that? What is a midlife meltdown? Okay, for all you young people listening to me, let's say, let's say you get to a certain point in your life. Let's say you make it to the age of 40. Let's say the people in your family live to the age of 80. So you're already doing the math. You're thinking, I'm halfway there. I haven't retired myself. I don't even feel like I'm getting close to retiring myself. This could be dismal. This could be a problem for me. And you're having a midlife meltdown, also known as a midlife crisis. Okay. Some of you, you just flat out want to retire sooner. You've done the math. You've, you've calculated your rates of return on whatever it is you're investing in. And, and you realize that you're either not going to get to where you think you're going to get to, or you're just not getting there fast enough. And as a result of that, you want to retire sooner. You like the fact that we tell you that you can get retired in the next five years. That is legitimate. It is a legitimate goal for you to obtain. Don't be surprised if you get it done faster. I know a lot of Lifestyles Unlimited members that laid out their five-year plan and were pleasantly surprised when they got it done in, say, two years, three years, or four years. It's okay to get it done in five years, too. Hey, it's okay to take a sixth year if you need it. Everybody starts in a different place. Everybody has a different amount of money that they start with. And as a result of that, everybody has different goals and objectives. Yeah, and we're going to talk about those things today. The question I have for you is, why did you decide that you want to invest in real estate? Now, Forbes magazine, they published an article. It was about two years ago, but I think it's still a, a good article. Ironically, they published this article in the middle of a pandemic, yet the information in the article seems to make a lot of sense to me. And the article itself talks about Eight different reasons you should consider investing in real estate. Now, I'm not going to go over all eight. I'm just going to go with the number one reason that they make. And I think it's a great reason. It says it's one of the safest investments you can make. Now, some of you are screaming at the radio going, no, I've heard all the stories about toilets, tenants, and taxes, and it all ends bad. Real estate may not be as glorified as you make it out to be, Al. Well, let's see what let's see what Forbes says. Their their statement is this. Real estate investing is safe and secured by the asset itself, the building. Yeah, the building, the improvements upon the land. It, it, and it you can't really take it anywhere. Okay, you can move buildings, but it's very hard to do. Getting back to Forbes, they're saying rarely, rarely Will you see your investment lose value? And if so, it's usually only for a short period of time. 
Unlike fiat currencies like the dollar bill, real estate doesn't lose value to inflation year after year. It performs better. This is Forbes magazine telling you this. This is not Al. Tell, okay, I guess I'm kind of telling you this, but it's their words and not mine. Smart investors can even set themselves up well in down markets by buying value add assets such as many did after the housing bubble burst in 2008. You want to know what Lifestyles Unlimited members are doing right now? They are licking their chops. They are licking their chops. They are seeing signs in the marketplace that we may see a slight depression in real estate values. Now, some of you just heard that statement and you're screaming at the radio saying, see, that's, that's exactly why the reason we shouldn't be invested in real estate. Okay, let's take a step back. What you don't know is what you don't know. Many of these real estate investments that are not doing well right now They weren't organized correctly. They were organized by people that either had bad goals and objectives or they they thought that the property could do something for them that the property would not ultimately be able to do for them. At Lifestyles Unlimited, we teach you reality. We teach you the smart way to buy assets. And more importantly, we teach you how to correctly operate those assets. That's where a lot of people that are getting in trouble today have deficiencies. They don't know how to operate their properties correctly. They're not focused on the residents. They're not focused on resident retention. They're not focused on giving the greatest value for the money in the marketplace. As a result of that, they're having problems. Now, even if you bought, say, a property two years ago and the value of that property has gone down, it doesn't mean you've lost money because if you're operating the property correctly, you are benefiting from something called the cash flow. The cash flow comes in routinely. It comes in every month. Your residents pay their rent on the first of the month. You use that rent payment to make all your associated payments for managing and operating that property. And whatever is left over is your profit. We call that cash flow. That's the money that comes into your household routinely that you use to live off of. And as a result, you ultimately use to retire yourself. See, it's a completely different scenario than than what you're being told around the water cooler. What they're telling you around the water cooler is that, oh, dollar cost averaging, bro. You should be dollar cost averaging. Well, I don't really think you should be dollar cost averaging. As a matter of fact, I think you should be out of the stock market. I mean, the stock market, you can look at any of the stock charts today and you can see that the stock charts are essentially depressed. They have not earned back any of the gains that they made literally two years ago. Yeah, it's it's been a declining market in the stock market. So why are you invested in there? Because you think you're getting more shares, more fractional shares of whatever you're buying, and those fractional shares are adding up. They're, you're getting those things at a discount. So when the market does come back, you're going to make a lot of money. Well, notice that Forbes said that real estate does come back. I, I didn't read a, a line in there that said, oh, you should you can get the same results in the stock market. No, the stock market is problematic. I've, I've invested in the stock market. I've lost money in the stock market. Even when I thought I knew what I was doing, I found out there was somebody else out there that knew more than I did, and I lost my butt. Yeah, I don't want that for you. I want you to be invested in real estate. When we come back from the break, we're going to get into the details about your personal inventory. Stick around. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. Everyone is asking, is it still a good time to invest in real estate? We see no indication that for the foreseeable future, and even the unforeseeable future, no indication whatsoever that real estate is suddenly not going to be the best vehicle for creating wealth and passive income for your family. And so that would say that now is the time to get in. And we very rarely talk about this because we talk about cash flow. But now we're talking a little bit about capital gains and what the future brings in that property. Because it's real. At the end of the day, you have all your cash flow, but you've got this nice capital gain when you sell. And the inflation that we see and the reasons for it 
are going to continue and we're going to see great capital gains at the end of the line when we sell these properties. Get in on the next free workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the second half of the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. And on today's show, we're going to talk about your personal inventory. You have to take a personal inventory of where you are financially in order to understand your starting place. You may have considered investing in real estate and you're, you're getting ready to go. You're getting ready to join Lifestyles Unlimited, take advantage of the education that we offer so that we can get you pointed in the right direction and get you retired in the next five years. Some of you, you're still sitting on the fence. Some of you are not convinced that this real estate investing stuff is for you. I get that. Not everybody needs to be doing real estate investing, but if it makes sense to you, if it makes sense to you to get retired in the next five years, if it makes sense to you to do something a little bit different than what everybody around the water cooler is doing, then maybe Lifestyles Unlimited is the right way for you to go. So let's talk about this personal inventory, shall we? What are your real estate goals? Have you written down your goals and your objectives? Why are they so important? Here's why. Because if you are not focused on the prize, if you're not focused on the end result, then everything you do between now and the end result is potentially going to fail you. It's going to fail you because you may do something wrong. You may do something inappropriate for the goals and objectives that you set for yourselves. Let's say you set a goal that you want to retire in the next five years. Okay, that is a great goal. I think that should be one of your goals. I think another one of your goals is you should have a even stronger marriage in the next five years. That's, that's just Al's opinion. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just saying these are goals that you can set for yourself. And by the way, the having a stronger marriage in five years, don't wait five years to have a stronger marriage, like do it in like five weeks or five days. I think that's, that's, that's better. That's a better approach because love and relationships can be resolved a lot sooner than your financial problems can be resolved. Does that make sense? Okay. So what are your real estate goals? Is it to retire in five years or less? Well, it's a great goal. Write it down. Write it down and put it in a place that you will see every day. Why am I having you do something that seems so elementary? Because I want to reinforce in your mind the fact that you have made a reasonable, obtainable goal, and I want you reminded every day of that goal. Because as you are reminded every day of that goal, you will start to do things during the day that will enhance your ability to achieve that goal. You cool with that? I know you're cool with that. All right. So let's, let's talk about some, some terms that maybe you're not aware of. Now, some of you are aware of them, or maybe, maybe you use them a little bit differently than, than I use them. So I'm going to give you some real estate investing terms that they're, they're, they're transitional. They could be used in, in, in stock investing. They could be used in gold investing. They could be used in Bitcoin investing. These are all things that you need to figure out. Are you ready? The first thing is I want you to figure out what your actual net worth is. Now, some of you, you know what your net worth is. You actually have a personal financial statement that tells you what your net worth is. Maybe your accountant does it for you. Maybe you do it yourself, but you know what your, your net worth is. Some of you have no clue of what I'm talking about. It's totally fine. Totally fine. Let me share with you what your net worth really is. You take a look at everything you own. We're going to call everything you own an asset. Things like your house, the house you live in. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to call it an asset on today's show. I know normally I don't, but I'm going to call it an asset for the purposes of this discussion. Things like your cars, all of your cars have a value to them. Things like your jewelry, things like whatever you have in your stock account, things like whatever you have in your mutual account, things like whatever you have in your retirement savings account. Okay, does that make sense? These are all assets. These are all things that have value in your household. Now, that's not a complete list of everything, but you get the idea, right? Now, what do you do with those assets? 
Well, you have to you have to compare the assets to any liability that you have against that asset. What do I mean by that? A liability against the asset. Okay, let's let's pick on your personal residence, shall we? Your personal residence, for, for the sake of argument, I'm allowing it to be called an asset for this discussion. Now, if we were talking pure real estate investing, your house is not an asset. It's actually a liability. But for the sake of this argument, we're going to call it an asset, and it's worth a certain amount of money in today's market. Chances are you have a mortgage against that asset. Now, some people own the property free and clear, and if that's true, then 100% of the value of that property stays in your asset category and does not get reduced by the liability factor. So what am I getting at? Let's say you live in a house that is worth in today's market $400,000. Let's say you have a mortgage on that property and that mortgage is $300,000. In order to determine the net worth of that particular asset itself, you take the asset value of $400,000, you subtract the liability number of $300,000, that's the loan, right? So the resulting number is that your house provides you a net worth of $100,000. What you do is you do this for all of your assets. Not all of your assets are going to have liabilities recorded against them. So homework is I want you to figure out what your actual net worth is, because that is your starting place. That's how much value you have in the world today. Let's let's be real clear here. Just because you have a $400,000 house doesn't mean it's worth $400,000 to your balance sheet. It's only worth $100,000 because you have a $300,000 liability against that asset. We, we crystal clear? Let's talk about something called liquid. There are two types of net worth. There is the, the liquid type and there is the non-liquid type. Liquid types are all of those things that are cash or cash equivalent. What does that mean? It means you can get your hands on it pretty easily within the next 24 hours. All right, let's move on to the next topic. What is your family's net spendable income? Your spendable income is important. It's important to know what it is because it's with that spendable income that you pay your bills and you pay your other obligations of life. And then whatever's left over of that, that's fun money, right? Okay, fun money. Take a look at fun money because you could have a lot of money that you allocate to fun that you could reallocate to invest. I've met people just like you day in and day out. I've met them. And I know there are people walking around the United States that have at least $1,000 a month of income that is spendable income that they don't use on their household expenses or any other obligations that contribute to their household. It's fun money. So think about it. If you could take $1,000 a month and set it aside, how quick could you build up money to invest in real estate? And then if you took a look at all these other places where you have money, quote unquote, invested, and you take a look at what those investments are doing for you, you may, you may change your heart. You may change your heart. You may think this real estate investing is the way to go, and you want to address all of your available money to investing in real estate. Pretty cool, isn't it? All right. Two other things I want you to figure out. How much passive income do you earn? Now, what is passive income? Passive income is income that comes from all investments that don't require much effort on your part. That's all the real estate that I'm invested in. It doesn't require much effort on my part. It requires a little bit of effort, but it's not like working 40 to 60 hours a week. It's not even close to that. I probably spend two, maybe, maybe three hours a month, a month. You heard me correctly, a month focused on my real estate investments. Yeah, I, I don't spend a lot of time on it because I've, I've learned how to hone my time. Here's the other thing I want you to address. With the investments that you do have, how many investments are paying you cash returns? Now, if those investments are in those 401ks or IRAs, you can't count that as a cash on cash return. Even though those investments may be producing cash, that cash has to go back into those retirement accounts. As a result, you don't have control over that cash and you can't use that cash to get yourself out of the rat race. No, you can't do it. The other thing I want you to take a look at is how are you doing with your equity returns? In other words, how are your investments growing over time? Now, to, to help me, what I did was I went to the S&P 500 and I said, look, if 
in the year 2017, the year I became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, if I took $100,000 and I invested it into the S&P 500, what would have been the returns to date, effective today, if I had started investing on January 1st of 2017? And here's my result. I would have turned, I would have doubled, I would have doubled the money. It would be worth $203,970.24, at the end of 2023. So actually this is this is calculating through the end of the year. That gives me a rate of return of about 104%. 104% or 12.43% per year. Now because that investment is in the stock market, the stock market is affected by inflation as are your dollars. Yes, are inflect are they're all affected by inflation. If you adjust for inflation, that 104% really comes down to about 66% rate of return. And instead of being a 12.43% rate of return per year, it actually drops down to about 8.65%. So over a period of how many years? Six years? It's about an 8.65% return year over year. Why do I bring that up? The reason I bring that up is that even though this is an investment I could have made six years ago that could have doubled my money, I'm looking at a piece of real estate that Moon sent me. This is a property in Texas City. It's a three bedroom, one bath, no car garage, about 1,300 square feet, built in 1976. Now get this, I can buy this asset for about $21,000 out of pocket. Yeah, so and I know those and this is why I keep asking you guys to figure out how much of your net worth is liquid, because in order for you to buy this property, you need to have liquid money. Yeah, we'll teach you all this stuff when you become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. Not a problem, but I can buy this thing for about twenty one thousand dollars. It will return an equity capture of about twenty three thousand dollars. What does that mean? That means it's going to give me a one hundred and ten percent return on investment the day that I buy it, the day that I buy it. And all I have to do is hold the asset for a year and I can harvest those gains and, and only be subject to long-term property. What, what am I saying? Long-term capital gains taxes. That's what I'm trying to say. So there's another component to this investment too. It's a cash on cash return. This property can produce almost $400 a month in passive income. When you take a look at the annual income that it produces and you divide that by the $21,000 that we would put into the property, we're getting a 22.3% return on investment. So just by buying this property, rehabbing this property, putting it back into service and operating this property correctly, the way Lifestyles Unlimited taught me how to do it. If I hold it for just a year, just a year, it will return approximately, now get this, you ready? Are you sitting down? 133% return on investment in one year, which beats what the S&P 500 could have done for me and did do for me. Well, it didn't do anything for me because I wasn't invested in the S&P 500. But if we go back to the example that I gave, it took six years to double my money. I just told you about what I would consider a very safe single, maybe a double, yeah, if we're if we're rating our investments like like baseball, this this deal that Moon sent me is is a solid single and it it might be a double. It could be a double because the cash flow is really good. I'm I'm getting more than 100% on the equity and all I have to do is hold the asset for a year and I'm going to do better than I could have done in the S&P 500 had I held for 6 years. This is the power of real estate. This is also why I want you to understand what your actual net worth is, what your liquid net worth is, what your family's net spendable income is, and how you're earning your investment dollars. Are you earning them cash on cash? Are you earning them in equity returns? Are you, like me, getting them in both forms? If you're not getting money from cash on cash and equity participation, I'm here to tell you that what you're doing for investing may be wrong and it may need to change. And it's okay to change. It's totally fine to change. It's totally fine to get you retired in the next five years. If you want to do what I'm doing, if you want to do what the 50,000 members of Lifestyles Unlimited are doing to change their lives, go to lifestylesunlimited.com, sign up for a free workshop, and let's get you going. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the host, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.